Matt from Benetti. Welcome to Reliability Radio. Thanks, Blair. Appreciate it. Um, so for our listeners, do you just mind giving a, a quick overview of what is Benetti? Yeah, uh, you know, we, we come from 25 years in the world of Maximo, implementing across all industries, doing, you know, pretty much anything you can do with Maximo. We've been there, done that. And really where we are today is products and services around the Maximo platform, but for reliability, for customer improvement and maturity. That's our real focus. Well, everyone knows that Maximo out of the box just works perfect, right? <laughs> that's how it works. So I don't know how you survive as a business, but <laughs> yeah, with a mi- with a million dollars, right, then, right. The, then it works. Yeah, yeah. Me. I think any CMS is in, in that it's as good as uh, good as the data you put into it. Um, so specifically, you are a platinum sponsor here at uh, the International Maintenance Conference 2019. Um, I have personally walked by your booth, um, and and you have um, signs up everywhere about bridging the gap and things like that, which is which I think is brilliant. There are two products I want to highlight here, and the first one um, is is being launched here right it's really coming out um it's called rc max yes can you can you walk us through what rc max is and why why did you create it and what it does yeah you know so backing up just a little bit here you know it was about five years ago we really got deeply involved with reliability web and about three years ago terry finally got me to sit down in one of these crl classes and it was like two days into this thing and i was just like i'm like wow we are a bunch of something idiots yeah. in the world. I don't have a beat button, so yeah, so I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it was just like, you know, it, it, the reliability is sitting right there beside us during this entire maintenance and CMMS journey, and we just never knew to look for it, right? And I guess part of the reason it really clicked for me was just because um, – the you know our mission had always been at Benetti customer improvement, and so realizing that right next to us was this path of improvement, you just had to understand it existed. So that has taken us to a point now in working with other reliability partners. So in January of this year, um, at our partner meeting, I met uh, Nick uh, with JMS Software. Yeah, Nick Jude, yeah. Every, yeah, and he's, I think everyone knows Nick. <laughs> yeah, you know, and we're talking, and he's like, "Yeah, eighty-five percent of these RCM studies fail." He, and, and for everyone that doesn't know Nick, he is is one of the I would say original true RCM guys, yeah. right? Like taught by. Yeah, by he the, learned from Max Smith, yeah. the guy, and he is literally, he literally just walked by us right now. On the street. He's right over there. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Speak of the yeah. devil. So, so I'm like, all right, well, this seems this is bad, right? Yeah, Explain yeah. this to me, Nick. And he goes, well, you know, it's not the study. It's the, you know, the the reliability engineers go through this process and they've done really good stuff and they come back to the maintenance department. And they go, hey guys, look what we did. And you know, you have an Excel sheet or a right. three ring binder. Yep. And the guys are in the maintenance department are going, well, yeah, I don't know what that is. Well, we don't have these assets in here though. What are these failure classes? Hey, you know what? Um, I got some PM work I'm going to do. I'm going to stick this on the shelf and I'll get to it I'll when to I don't it. have any more work year left to one, do. Year one, year two passes, exactly. the dust layer picks Dead. up. Yep. It dies right there. And so what we looked at was, well, how, how do we fix that? How do we close this gap, right? Close the gap. And so we said, well, got to get the data in Maximo, right? Get it in the CMMS. Well, what does that really mean? And it's, this is not about importing data, right? Because the way you do things when you go about that RCM study are not the way you do things in Maximo. So we're now we're kind of we're blending process culture in order to get the data in Maximo. So where we ended up was, you know what? You've got to build it inside the product. That's the only way. So we use the Maximo tools to actually build the screens in Maximo. And it's an RCM that flows in the traditional method with the addition of the technological capabilities of Maximo. So it's honestly it's improved. Because now you have technology helping you do things along the process. Right. And, it, you know, this is now where these guys, they come in and they say, okay, well, let me select the asset we're going to look at. It doesn't exist. Well, I just click insert. And now it's there. It's done. So when this is handed off, there's nothing missing. It's a complete, it's complete RCM with the data intact, and it's 
implemented. All you got to do at the end. So this, the risk is calculated. The recommended tasks are automated. All you got to do is say accept. And now it's implemented. It's, it's the equivalent of the easy button. Yeah. But I mean, obviously doing RCM is not easy to get the, to get the data, but to implement but, it. Exactly. The gap of getting it out of that three ring binder and into Maximo, that's the easy and, and button part. Truly, it's done now. Where does an RCM belong? Right. In, in, you're trying to improve it, your, 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 your strategies, your maintenance yeah. strategies, your planning schedule, like all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Where do you it, do it? You do it in your CMM. Ideally, you do it in your CMMS. You should be. It, right? You know, and so, you know, I, I, I felt like, you know, that, that moment when I was, you know, in that CRL class, I was like, how can this be possible that I've been in this industry for over 20 years at this point and I've never seen this stuff? And so you're going, okay, hold on. Someone else is doing this and I just didn't realize sure, it. Yeah. And you look and we've searched, we've searched, we've searched. It's not out there, you know? It's not on IBM's radar at all. They're nowhere even near thinking about this. And the other partners, we know there are other partners who do reliability stuff, but none of them are doing this. And we're like, holy crap, this really is a gap. It's just a gaping hole. And we are never really going to get these maintenance departments to move to true reliability until their tools support the activity. So that's our mission. We've yeah. changed our mission. There you go. That's perfect. To the tools <laughs> support their activity. I love it. And, and so the, the other product is um, nimler, similar naming convention called Max BI. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is another one. Anyone who's used Maximo knows that, first of all, it may come with 200 out-of-box reports, but it comes with a dozen you're going to use, most likely. And those are generally focused around printing work orders, printing POs, things like that, right? Your daily operational re required reports, they're important, right? Sure. And, yep. and you need them. And Maximo dashboards are really centered around the same thing. What's going wrong right now? What records do I need to look at? But the real problem with most Maximo implementations is that the data sucks. That's really the core problem. And, you know, I know you guys on, on the AI side, you have to see this as well. Every time you go in to do something, you need data, you need right? Data. You can't analyze error, That's right? right? You've got to have data. And so we took a look at that and we said, okay, you know, we've been writing reports for years. And, and I think, you know, like if you were to talk to guys over at An Asset Analytics, another reliability partner, they'll tell you the same thing. We write reports, you know all day long for these guys. Everybody wants a different flavor of it, and the same problem always exists. They don't get the result they want because they don't put in the data required to get the result. So what do we do? We said, okay, we're going to build what I would call a hierarchy of analytics to help you improve. And then we looked at, well, how do we want to do it? Where do we want to do it? And we ended up building this out in the Microsoft Power BI platform because the majority of our enterprise customers have an Office 365 enterprise license. They have access to Power BI at no additional charge. That's right. right? Yep. That, that's the easy button for them, for, for the IT side, right? I'm not trying to deploy something new. You ready? That's right. It. Yeah, yeah. IT friendly right there. Yeah. yeah. And so what we did was we said, well, layer one. What's layer one? Layer one is analyze your data completeness and the quality of the data you're putting in. Right? Very simple. Are my guys putting all the fields I want on the work order? Do, you know, a, a, are, how quickly am I closing these things out? What, what about my assets? Do I have replacement values on them? You, the, just basic data. And that helps them to start to improve and get the data in place. Once they've done that, then they start looking at the second layer. What's my on-time PM performance? What's my asset utilization? What's my labor utilization? across that layer. And once they start to get good data there, then it moves into the overall system effectiveness, right? Which is all about performance, availability, and quality. But until you get those first two layers done, that OSE pyramid is worthless. It's not going to help you because, again, you're analyzing error. There's nothing there. So this actually enables them to mature their data in the system through the process such that it becomes a tool that helps them grow and get better. A couple interesting side effects of this as well are, one, you don't have to have a maximum license to get to these. And the traditional problem with anything you built in Maximo from an analytics perspective was the fact that you're, 
you know, no one who's an executive is going to use it because they have to have a maximal license, number one. And number two, it's a clunky interface. It's not a dashboard tool. It's clunky. So that makes it easy. Deploying it across the enterprise. And, you know, then what this also does, it doesn't let them change the SQL query. And that's technically so important because I can't tell you, you know, these guys walk into a conference room for their morning meeting and you have five different guys who say they have the same data, but they all got the data some different way, a different export, a different SQL query. And so they have five different versions of the same and you end up spending an entire meeting arguing about something. Who that's has just, the right data. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, you guys don't have the same data. So this keeps the data consistent. It allows the users based upon their role to view it the way they need to view it for their job, but it's the right data. It's the same data. Excellent. And I think, you know, I don't want to simplify the work that went in behind the scenes, but you have a really simple answer to a very large gap in oh, this I, community, I, right? We believe so. You know, we spent we spent a ton of time really trying to hit that nail on the head the way you described it. It needs to be really simple. It needs to feel simple. The delivery has to be incredibly user friendly to them. And this idea of it kind of being a hierarchy was also critical as well. It has to be very intuitive how I move from this analytic I'm on now to the next one in the maturity step. It has to be clear. And again, this is things like, you know, well, how do you name a report? Well, it's actually pretty darn important if you want people to get the, the right, if you want people to access it for the right reason so they're getting the right data for the problem they're trying to solve. And that's another thing we had to standardize in this process so that you're not going to the wrong report thinking you're getting the data you want. Right. Excellent. I think there's going to be a lot of people listening, sitting at their computer because they're listening to this at work and they're, and they're looking behind them and they're seeing the RCM study. Going, oh man! Yeah. They're looking at their <laughs> computer. They're go, they're looking at maximal. They go back, look at it. Hard. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, those those three or four three ring binders that that's right. never got implemented yeah, and, and in the same, CMMS. And the yeah, same thing with the reports, right? So he's got an email saying, "Please put this report together for tomorrow." Right? Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Matt. It's been a pleasure. Where can the listeners find more information about Benetti? Well, we're get us on the web at Benetti.com. If you're at IMC, we're booth one twelve. Um, if not, we'll either see you at the Reliability Conference or at Maximal World. So Excellent. Well, thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Blair, thank you. This podcast is copyrighted by Reliability Web, Inc. All rights reserved. ReliabilityWeb.com and Reliability Radio are trademarks of Reliability Web, Inc.